Yes, sir. Back again. Y'all know what it is. Episode, where we at? We at 59. Yes, sir. Dang, 59 my water weeks. At? In their hearts. 59 <laughs> weeks on the charts. What? Where's my water at? There was no more, bro. Dang, you took the last one? Unfortunately. Man. Yeah. Sometimes bad. that's just how it goes, bro. Nah, yeah. Nah, but you know... Again, I mentioned this a few times, but whenever you were uh, singing that one song earlier, that reminded me when uh, Mark wanted our theme song to be, uh, I'm different, yeah. I'm different. Nah, man. <laughs> nah, man. We, had to, we had to break the news to him. That, that, was, that ain't it. <laughs> no, that was crazy. He was really like pushing that for us to be that, like Mark, our Mark's official just song. A, Mark's just an old head. That's unk. You know, he's, nah, he's yeah. Like that. I re- but I remember that. But imagine like you like tuning into the podcast and that's the first thing you hear like in your like in your headphones and in your car. Like, that's crazy. I'm different. Yeah, I'm, I'm different. Uh, <laughs> I'm leaving the meeting. No, nah, that yeah, that's crazy. But that's I remember that song was actually hot though. I mean when it came out. Like that was like going eighteen seventy. No, no, hold on, bro. I already looked this up, but I, I keep forgetting. It was like when I didn't know it was about two chains, I forgot about that. Song called I'm Different. And then it was like, no, it was uh it came out like two thousand three. 13 like 2013 2012 well, I, know, I feel like that song's so old like yeah but why why do i feel like i was we were playing that like people were actually were listening to that? that no i was hearing it enough somebody was no <laughs> i don't know those people whoever that somebody went crazy. is i don't know who that record was went crazy that. <laughs> but now you ready let's get it all right yo it's your boy D starks starks hardest you're now tuned in to the justice from podcast where we talk about everything face life and culture Man, if it's your first time tuning in, welcome. And if you've been rocking with us for a while, welcome back. If you're listening on the podcast app, whether that be Spotify, Apple, or Google, uh, make sure you leave a rating and write us a review. Help us push the content, grow our audience, right? And then if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, push the notif- notification bell so you can be notified every time that we post and stay up to date on everything. Much love. We appreciate y'all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's get it. What I go. say? It's just 59. 59 of them things. How you feeling? You good? Psh, feeling good, man. I- it was an uneventful week, bro. It usually is. Yeah. And nothing really going on too much. I ain't complaining about yeah. it. Yeah. No, I, but right now, I am really loving this weather, though. I can definitely say that. Mm. Loving it, bro? I mean, yeah, I'm loving it. I mean, y'all can see I got my little, like, my hoodie on. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? But it's reminded me of, like, last year when we started the podcast, because we started around this time. Yeah. Um, And I would literally, I would, like, I would wear hoodies all the time. Like, I would come in and I'd, like, wear, like, my, uh, whether that be a pullover sweater yeah. or whatever. And that was just, yeah. I always had a little pullover, you know, crew neck. I mean, you would always you would always wear the uh, jacket too, the hoodie. Yeah. Because, right. you know, your cut wasn't looking good. You feel me? Your taper was a little All right, mid. Bro. All right, bro. <laughs> Why do we have to bring the taper into this, bro? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you would you would, you would would wear that. You would have, like, you usually, like, a, a gray uh, little uh, jacket. I mean, I'm not going to deny it. you wear the hood it. over because your, your hair was, I'm not like, going to deny it. I did have the hood on, it was but going, it's just, It was like, going through your little face. Because you was growing your hair back out. I was out, growing I it back out. It was yeah. weird. It was a weird... Have you cut your hair since then? I don't think so. So you've been growing it out for a year? You haven't cut it Something out? Something like that. I don't think... <laughs> What do you, you laugh? I don't about? know. I mean, I, I, how, do you feel like you seen a lot of growth? It's shrinkage. Yeah, no, it's it's be just real. Shrinkage, bro. That's what everybody shrinkage says. Shrinkage is real. But no, I was. Um, I remember. I always make fun of people when they do this or when they're on they use this platform. But I was on Facebook. I was going through pre- Facebook. I know that's crazy. No, it's, but I was on Facebook and I saw a post someone put on their timeline. It was like. Um, uh, summer really clocked out at the end of his shift or something like that. Summer dipped, bro. <laughs> because like literally, like I think it was like the first day of fall, whenever the first official day of fall was. Yeah. I feel like it, all, like it literally got cold, a like that huge next drop day. off. I'm saying, yeah, just like there bam. was no gradual or whatever. Because I feel like last year, like August going into October, it wasn't. It was still. It was weather was bipolar. Like it was weird. It was, bro. Yeah. Like here one day, you had to check the weather app to see if it was seventy eight or fifty two. Right. Like that yeah, was crazy. no, but I'm um. I'm enjoying this weather. I like That's I thrive nice. these last three months of yeah. the year, like the like you know, October, whatever, December. Like mm-hmm. obviously with like all the holidays and then I just like the the weather, bro. It's like, easier like the to colder. dress. Yeah. What do you mean? Like you can do like layers and stuff. It's just easier. What do you mean like what do you mean layers? Like like you can do like a little combo if I had like a tee, flannel, jacket combo. Flannel you know, like, with the jacket? Yeah. Oh, my bad. Fashion connoisseur. Over no, here. I'm really like, come it's on. Kanye it's West just, now. It's just easier to dress, bro. It's just it's more simple. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now let's go ahead and tap in and get straight into it. So for this episode, we were, this had to be about like two or three weeks ago. Um, we were at church, um, or at least attending a church, and there was this uh, guy that had come up, and he was basically promoting a, like a three-day event happening like uh, later in that month. And 
he was talking as he was speaking and i'm like listening to what he's saying i'm like yo like this is definitely something that we're probably eventually going to touch on or yeah. like you know definitely get to on the podcast and what as one of the things that he mentioned or at least starts off with in the speech is um the fact that one of the most spiritual things in the world is culture because it shows you who's influencing what you can always tell who's ruling through the culture um in terms of like you can always tell who's ruling uh the culture through whoever has like the most power like the most influence um then he continues to say that and god's answer for the culture is the church but when the church refuses to engage in the culture the culture isn't the issue the church is mm. And that that whole sentiment of like what he was speaking about during the speech is the fact that like the church was always meant to be the answer for the culture. And if heaven doesn't speak, hell will. And like since the church has like had a tendency um, of like removing itself like from or at least moving its participation from the culture, uh, we have given reign for the enemy to like control the narrative yeah. for what the norms should be and what the traditions are and what, how people live their day to day lives. And we talked about this a while ago and it happens on Monday and the fact that um, there should be more people getting saved like um, in classrooms, mm. right? Um, in workplaces and hallways, lunchrooms and yeah. they're on altars. And the goal is to not keep the gospel within four walls, but to, uh, take it to every corner of the earth. Right. And our ultimate goal is really to place God back at the forefront of the culture. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that or at least a mission or a sentiment that we're not always as intentional about or like as assertive and really like going after. Yeah. And it was funny cause we're preparing for this. And I saw something on TikTok that our friend posted, shout out Seth. And it was life on earth. Isn't about making it to his kingdom. It's about building it. And I think sometimes I like, like it's always like a process of finding that balance of like, okay, yeah, of course I'm very intentional about like, uh, under, being aware of my eternity mm. and not like, you know, getting wrapped up in the things of the world, but simultaneously knowing that like, yo, there's still work to do while I'm here. Right. So I know I'm going to like, um, be within the kingdom right, right fully, but also I'm, I have a job to build it all right here on earth. Mm. And so, yeah, I thought that was important because sometimes that can be, we can just like miss that. And I think it's important to make sure that like we're taking steps into really, affecting every part of the culture because yeah. God wants his glory like to fill the to fill the earth. Exactly. And so it's something that we kinda like really as a collective body just like re engage in and something that we wanted to like hit on. Yeah, for sure. I, and I think for me at least, the biggest frustration with this conversation is the fact that as believers we have the capability to be at the forefront of culture. Like we we have the gifts and we have the talents. Like God is <laughs> the origin of all creativity. Mm -hmm. You know, so so we have everything we need and we're equipped with that. We're just not moving on it. It reminds me of um, in Exodus when God had told Moses to build his tabernacle and gave him all these steps and what to build it out of. And then after he gave him all these instructions, he said, go out into your camp. Like I've already equipped the people with the gifts and talents to be able to build this for you. And it's the same with us. Like he's prepared us and given us the gifts and equipped us to go out. So it, now it's just like, why haven't we, you know? And that reminded me of the scripture in First Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians 5, 9 through 13. It says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with the sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy or the swindlers or the idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave this world. But now I'm writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but is sexually immoral. Do not eat with such people. So this is Paul saying like we're actually supposed to be in the world. And actually even him warning us of the stuff that we would encounter, he's saying, you're going to encounter people who are sexually immoral. You're going to encounter people who are immoral and greedy and swindlers. He's saying you're going to encounter all this. And it's like we look at these things as reasons why we should step out of the world. And Paul's saying these are the reasons that we should be in it, right, like so that we can affect it. I think for some people, at least, it's it's out of a, like fear. Like we're scared of these things. Like we're, we're scared to encounter and, and, and walk into these things. So that's why we're kind of like shot away, you know. Yeah, and... I think another part of this conversation, it's like has a really uh, similar sentiment in like a adjacent message to what we talked about in Too Far Gone. But um, I talked to, we talked, we, me and Jordan talked to our parents about this uh, pretty frequently and a lot, but they talk about like their experience growing up, 
up in the church and the things that they were taught and different traditions and what like the culture looked like during yeah. that time like in the body and it was always a message of the fact that like yo like if you inherently just like step into cultural spaces and or environments or things that may be more secular and like outside of just like church gatherings or got like or just uh settings where there are believers mm -hmm. it's like you're inherently going to like fall or stumble mm -hmm. and or lose your righteousness yeah and it was like somewhat this misconceived like misconception of like hey like the holy the power of the holy spirit is only effective when you're surrounded right. with other christians or when they're with within four walls mm. uh on a particular day yeah. and that was just like obviously can't be any far from the truth and like mm. there's this thought sometimes that yo like if i just step into these groups right. or i'll talk to these people or i'm i'm around uh, these individuals or uh that uh, setting is going to automatically just set me back and God's not going to give me like the strength and the power like you said like he's already equipped us yeah. to be able to like handle whatever like we may be like going into or exactly. stepping into exactly. and so I think that's another part that has like removed our participation from it is like this very just like illegitimate and like irrational fear that somehow like God is not going to go with us mm -hmm. to the places that he's called us to or wanted us to step into because that's the the premise of the Great Commission and the, like the purpose, like what we're supposed to be doing here. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think it's, yeah, I agree with what you said. I think it's also, it's very possible to go into these spheres and into this world and not compromise. You know what I mean? Still stand firm in what you believe and for God to be with you. In right. There, you and know? that's what I was going to say. I forgot about that. Yeah. It's like, and it's a turn to a question of also like, yo, can you be successful in cultural realms? Whether that be like entertainment, mm -hmm. sports, business, finance, um, news commentary whatever like fill in the blank can you be extremely successful in these spaces and simultaneously not compromise on what you believe mm -hmm. like can you be the best you know nba nfl right. mlb professional soccer player can you be the best like news anchor radio commentary influencer youtuber um et cetera, et cetera? Like in that in that space, and also stand true, mm -hmm. like on what God's called you to do, yeah. and like or at least on um, the things in which you believe and the principles that you have. Because I think that that's another thing. I think that sometimes, like as a church, we kind of like demonize people who try to take a step outside of like this little bubble or right. circle that we in, and try and actually take this message mm -hmm. to that space. Exactly. And um, and sometimes we think, okay, like, so since they've reached this, uh, a very big level of success, you know, that they inherently, they had to compromise or sell themselves out to right. get to that point. Right. And I don't, I think, I don't believe in that. I think the two can coexist. They're right. like, yo, you can be extremely successful mm -hmm. <clears throat> in whatever area it is, um, and still hold the name of God and do it, do it boldly. And so, um, I don't know like where that thought comes from. I think that's still a sentiment. I feel that sometimes. It's like, still there. It with, you know, different people. I know like um, we can think about like Lecrae. I know he got like mm. brunt for this, and uh, just mentioning him as like name recognition, most people would obviously know who he is. And I think that's maybe somewhat of an adjacent or good example of like mm. okay, like yo, an individual who stepped outside of not Christianity outside just the traditions of the church to take the gospel yeah. right to the highest level in terms of like to hip hop mm. right in in the highest level um it was demonized for it and like oh well it like was. you know you couldn't reach that type of success without compromising or selling mm -hmm. yourself out and I just don't think that that's necessarily the case yeah I agree I think I think both can both can be true, you know, and you can stay true while also going into these um, these different systems. And I think it's true. It's it's just harder. It's it's harder going out. It, I think it's it's a lot easier to stay true to my beliefs and who I am when I'm in these four walls, surrounded by a bunch of believers. You know what I mean? It's 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 a lot harder when I'm going out. And it's more convenient. Yeah, people are prior prioritizing their convenience. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's really all it is. And it's like. People are just sitting in in their comfort and like imagine that like that that imagine how that feels like you're stepping out trying to you know do the hard like you know what I mean do the hard thing because it's not easy stepping out and trying to be bold about your faith and then you have people who you're like wanting to um, 
you're seeking for like encouragement from and they're like like yo what are you doing while they're just kind of just sitting there like you know in the, in behind their convenience you know what i mean so i think that's even a part of it like people are just prioritizing what's easiest for them you know yeah and i def i think i've definitely been there because you're i don't th you're obviously you're not as like i don't i don't even want to say challenged but I think what, what, when you're stepping into, I mean, you can, you see this in like your everyday, whether like, you know, you're like within school yeah. or like in, in your work, like your workplace, mm -hmm. your place of employment, or just like literally just stepping out anywhere, uh, like, like social, like yeah, whenever honestly. like you're stepping out into those spaces, and especially not only just when like you're present there, but like when you're engaging, yeah, like with the, like in these settings, like it is something that definitely challenges you on what you believe and how firm you actually are in it yep. right and like with all like temptation and options for you to go in different directions and so it's usually like easier for me to stay at the crib mm -hmm. right yeah. or like just do the like bible studies which i'm not saying don't do that i'm just saying don't neglect this part right, right so like exactly. disclaimer but <clears throat> it may be easier for me to just do the Sunday mornings and that be like, okay, the, the, the box I check off of like, okay, I did it this mm -hmm. week. Right. Or, okay, we, we, you know, we did a life group Saturday you we know. went bowling. You yeah. feel me? We went out and we was skating game. We was doing that <laughs> we thing, doing fellowship. It, you know what I mean? I was out there. Right. Um, but I think there's also that, that other side of it that you have to step into, but it can't, I, I mean, it can be like overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and frightening and like daunting sometimes but it's like it's definitely the call because i know i've i've been there mm -hmm. um especially like my junior year coming to god because i was just like a, a real church goer in the sense of like yo like being inside the four walls like being in the physical building it's like all i wanted to do right like i wasn't really interested in like mm -hmm. talking to anybody else being any like being anywhere which isn't necessarily the worst thing but it like removed my part again removed my participation from me actually going and using my gifts to influence yeah. and impact the culture mm -hmm. because it's twofold. I think like we're supposed to empower the, empower the church yeah, for sure. while also changing the culture. Mm -hmm. And that's the main goal, yeah. right? Like Sunday is the place in which like we gather for encouragement, instruction in order for us to like go throughout our week. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that that's also like, uh, it's important to know and think in your mind. Yeah, Tim Ross, um, he he always explains the church. He compares it to like an embassy. It's like representation on foreign soil. So when you look at it that way, like the, the church is just the embassy of the kingdom of God, right? On this on this foreign soil or foreign land of like the earth, right? You don't you don't live at in the embassy. You know what I mean? You don't you don't live out of the embassy. You're still you live in the land, but you come to the embassy whenever you need um whenever you need something right that pertains to um any type of affairs going on with your home country your home country right so i mean when you look at it that way I, I, that always made more so that made a lot of sense to me like yo like yeah it's the embassy you don't live in the embassy but the embassy is important and it's needed right and you need to right. exactly so yeah that's how that's how i always look at it you don't live in the embassy you don't live in the embassy that's fire i like that yeah, and I think we talked about it. I don't. When, did we talk about it? And it happens on Monday, but like not making like church an idol. I think we touched on. We might have. We touched it at some point. We talked about. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I, we definitely did. But I, you know, not making church an idol, and making that the end all, making that the end all be all of your faith and how you're operating and living out like your day to day. Yeah. Because it can be, like, that restrictor when it becomes like okay, this is um. Uh, the drive, like taking the driver's seat of my activity and how I'm like living out everything. It's like, yeah. oh, like what they said I could or couldn't like do like uh, through the church. Well, not necessarily that. Like, um, I can only do X, Y, and Z here, yeah. right? Like my creativity and my influence stops here. Like I'm only concerned with what ha what happens mm -hmm. in this space and and nothing else. Uh, more in that more in that way or at that lane. Yeah. I think I just think I don't know with the conversation at the end of the day I, I there's there's really just no reason like I said earlier there's no reason why we shouldn't be at the forefront like it honestly just comes down to like understanding like what our purpose really is and moving on it you know because like I said we're equipped we have we have the gifts right the amount of like so many like talented people I've seen like in churches right with all these gifts and all these talents 
it's just it's just about mobilizing it. You know what I mean? It's just about actually doing it. So I mean, I, there's really no excuses. But I mean, and we we keep talking about Tim Ross. Jordan's been listening to him a lot, so <laughs> this is the him. reason why. But I mean, he mentioned this. I saw a video, and he was talking about like the church has done a poor job of really uh, catering to creatives. And so, That's anytime there's an individual who may have a gift of speaking and or communication, like we just put a mic in your hand, and then like you and I, are a pastor, or That's you're a good point. you're a youth leader, and or like yo, you have a an amazing or beautiful voice, That's right? Like okay, like now putting you within a choir, or, like pushing you into like a role or a function of the church instead mm -hmm. of like catering what your gift may be to the world, right? Catering mm -hmm. what this may look like for the actual culture so you can advance God. That makes sense. You can advance God there. Because even when you look at the person who has the gift, that's not even really on them because like they don't know any better in the sense that like, you know, for, for me, like for us, for example, like when we like started really, our relationship with God heavily started going to this new church, we were just eager eager to use our gifts in any way but we just encountered people that were like hey take your gift and go out with it but some people i met with people that are like hey take this gift and like oh just go go up on stage right do 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 a sermon right so i mean I, that makes sense that makes sense it's not really on them it's just about like who's guiding them you know so and i think it's also like sometimes there's this um just hierarchy of or at least uh ooh, le like levels of value in what we deem to be more important yeah oh, sometimes sure. like of like okay like the pastor is yeah. more influential and that has the most visible like gift and all that therefore mm -hmm. like we that's more celebrated or appreciated yeah. or you know given more applause mm. rather than someone going out and doing ministry in a I'm not even, I don't even like to say untraditional because it shouldn't be, it untraditional. Shouldn't be untraditional like it should be the norm but like by by standards that we've seen a more untraditional way right. they're not as applauded and, right. or like giving that type of like pat on the back or encouragement mm -hmm. of like or motivation or just affirmation rather yeah. of what they're doing or how how they're doing it mm. they're both equally as important mm -hmm. at the end of the day <clears throat> and um i mean even if we take it back to the word like there's a common theme throughout the entire bible of god using using people's gifts for like a range of different things of like going out right and using them not just sitting and and you know confining them to one thing but going out like he used moses and his gifts to bring you know the chosen people out of the foreign land he used david's gifts to crown him as the king to like win win wars he used he used Paul's gifts to go speak to people that no one else was speaking to. So, I mean, it's, it's right it's right in front of our faces. It's right there. I think we're just doing it it's so backwards, right? So, I mean, I think you always got to take it back to the word. And it's it's it seems pretty simple and point blank period to me, you know? So <clears throat> No, yeah. And it's, it's just all about, like, what you're saying, of course, what we keep, like, reiterating so much, but, like, just going and going out into the world. And what the world is ultimately like run and controlled by the culture. And so I think that's why it's so like dope. And we're seeing like this new wave of like what like ministry or evangelism looks like with like obviously like social media. So like seeing like different like influencers, YouTubers and people like in this digital space that are like taking like the word there yeah. and like their faith and being bold in it at that stage and at this level because that's where everyone's at. Right. When you think about like even different like slang or jokes yeah. or trends like TikTok it sounds like bro you be you know what I mean like how they be having a chokehold on people like yeah. obviously you know the Ice Spice thing like you know what I was feeling <laughs> that's crazy. That's good. like but that's how powerful that that's a part of what culture looks like yeah. and how powerful it can be so if we, that's why like it's in, so imperative for us to be in that space and to have a narrative where like God's being the forefront of that exactly and so like you said with that and how those examples look like in the Bible that's kind of what obviously what it's looked like for individuals in the past and the church in the past is not what it's going to look like now. Like we're seeing like this new, this entirely new space. And I think that's great. And people are using, using their gifts and whatever that looks like for them and their purpose, like in, in different ways, which I just think that we have to like continuously just always keep at the forefront of not to be like yeah. so, so intentional about, and it's more than just being like a regular church goer that does the Sunday thing. Yeah. But also like, you know, making sure like, you're taking that like same energy mm -hmm. right in up like a rapport like exactly. on Monday mm -hmm. right when you're stepping into 
the building, right? The classroom, lunchroom, whatever. Yeah. So I think that's just huge. But yeah. You got anything else for the people? Yeah, I just uh leave the leave the people off saying like I just reiterating what I was saying earlier about how God God has equipped us with every everything that we would need to to go out, right? And to be effective. All all the talents, all the gifts, all the creativity his spirit to guide us and to protect like we we have everything that we need there's there's no reason for us to be shying away out of any fears out of you know prioritizing convenience whatever it is like at this point like there there aren't any excuses cuz it's it's all right there so yeah it's got to go to the forefront and go and go and go where go where we're needed so yeah yes sir for a fact now I'm going to just leave it off with that uh I think just understanding what the what the assignment is, what the true assignment is, and just not losing sight of that and always keeping that like on your mind. That life on earth isn't about making it to his kingdom, but it's about building it. Mm-hmm. And it's his kingdom work. Yeah. Maybe that's what the title how how this EP will be. I didn't have a title yet, but that makes sense. I like that. But it's his kingdom. It's a, like it's his this is kingdom work. It's not just it's just not it's not just church this is about expanding his kingdom and what that looks like yeah um across the entire earth that was jesus's mission while he was here Uh, of course with like saving us for heaven it was also like wanting to like get us equipped for what we need to do here on earth exactly right and giving us um tools like the information and the resources to be able to like walk this thing out at the highest level and not obviously have dominion in every space so yeah kingdom work kingdom work that's tough it's his work so yeah i know what it is you good you, ain't, you sure you got nothing else no nah, i think that was, yeah, yeah, all right. i think that was it bro no yeah but hey like i know what it is stay you stay real and stay humble we'll catch y'all next week much love